Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll talk about how do we handle delete request in Remix. Yep, there are different approach to this and you can go your own way, but I thought maybe I just record this video because uh, you might find this challenging. Um, I also did some update on dashboard and you can see this is the new dashboard. I'll talk about those updates too. Um, we will come to this, but mainly on how we uh, handle different types of requests, create, um, update, delete, and all sorts of stuff because Remix is different um, and it is going to uh, work differently. So let's start. Uh, the first thing I will do is I will go to the storefront and I'm going to preview the theme because we are running this on a preview theme and see what I have done. This is the theme that I am previewing. I will just right click preview and in the code, um, if I come to my code, nothing has changed here um, except if I go to extension wishlist icon go to the block and this is the wishlist icon that we have so I'll close the sidebar uh, we can see everything here so here is what I have done these are all JavaScript and Alpine.js stuff um, there is a full video on Alpine.js in the channel that you can watch or you can just go through the documentation very easy we just add a click and also we add a debounce um, to make sure people are not like clicking clicking so debounce will send only one the request only once so it is going to call this function add wishlist this is going to be the svg icon and this will be the text that will be displayed but you can customize it and add more option to this this is just an example of different types of settings we have so our component ca called wishlist which is at the bottom here here's what i have done on initialize this function will run so when the page refresh it is going to send a request to our app this is the app URL and then it is going to send the customer ID, product ID and also the, the domain. It is going to see if the user have this product product to their wishlist. If it has, it is going to make this true. So it is going to see if the data returns something, make this true and that will uh, toggle the property of wishlist true and this heart will be filled. That's the one first thing I did. Uh, you can have your own approach of course in real life you will cache this uh, request and for every refresh you are not going to heat up your server you will do a lot of caching but for now that's fine for us this is the function that we are calling if the customer is not logging we just alert and return so that is normal in the previous video here's what i have done we create a form and uh, data in here and we put the customer id product id shop and also we append another state here call action you can call this anything like intent or anything I call it underscore action because why we put underscore because form has an action attribute I don't want to confuse it with that action it has a value of create by default and I say if the wishlist is true means we have it in the wishlist let's make the action to delete um, this is how it works if I come to one of the products for example this middle one um, let's check this is the wishlist, we don't have it in the card. I am going to open the inspector to see everything is working properly and I will move this at the bottom. For now, you can see we have an error because we did not update the URL of the app. So let me do that quickly. And you should also learn how I do it, right? So this is the new URL. I'll open it, copy this, oops. I'll copy this and then we come to our app let's update the URL and we save it this is the new URL and this time if I refresh it it should send the request properly we don't get any error so if I scroll down this is the wishlist and let's add it to the wishlist it is done you can check the net network request now if I refresh my page it should persist like okay now see this is wishlisted okay now if i click um, wishlist again it should remove that that's why if i go to the network tab i can see i click on this it is going to send the same post request this time with the payload i have the action of delete you can send action of patch action of create action of whatever you name it but in the back end um, this is where we have our wishlist api so if i come in the back end inside the action this is where it will handle all the form requests 
Uh, what I do is instead of listening for the submission, like for the method of delete post or something like that, I will listen for the action. Here's the data. I will listen for the action. If that is create, then you can create the wish list. If it is equal to delete, you will delete it from the database and then you are going to return a request. The source code is available. You can check it in fu like full details, but this is basically how I do it. It looks clean for me for now, but you can refactor it if you can do it better. Cool, that is uh, one update I did. And that is how you can um, handle different type of requests with only one action, so action function. So if you have your own, instead of like you say patch, I don't have a patch request, but you can just change the action value to patch and then you can handle that directly here. Whatever um, makes uh, your application uh, easier, so you will do that. That is one thing. And the other thing is if I come to the backend the app this is the wish list uh, overview I just added some text here you can find the course channel and everything and also this is the empty state um, let's find where this is so if I come and search for index I think it is in the index page yep it is right here manage your wish list so here is what I have done. I have this data table. It is a Polaris component that accepts some data. So I will pass the wishlist array. Wishlist array is coming from database. And if this does not, if wishlist data is empty, we are displaying empty state. Empty state is also a Polaris component. You can check it in the documentation of Polaris. Let me go to the icon. Um, but yeah, so you can go to the empty state this is the component that I have used and uh, it has different styles but you can customize it the way you want but this is the, the empty set but if it has some data then display it in the data table again um, this is where I get the information from on load we have this loader function and it is going to get data from database we import the DB we learned that in the previous videos and then we pass uh, we return that as JSON once you have this Inside your component, you use the data loader, put a wishlist data, and then you will map through them and convert it to an array. Because um, table data accept array, so we just do that. If you have an object, you can use index table, which is another component. Let me quickly show you what I mean. If I come here, um, scrolling down in the table section, you have data table. You can see this is how you display the table. And if you scroll uh, a little bit down, you can see it has the row and the row will accept um, the array of the data that you have. If you have, if you use the index table, the user can select it. They can do different types of like bulk action if you want to delete it. For us, we are just displaying the data and that should work. Now let's see if we have any data because we just wish to see this product and just we removed it. Before doing that, let's check our database, right? In here, I am going to come and run npm run Prisma Studio. Uh, let's run Prisma Studio. We don't have any data. Let's add some product to the wish list to see if this is working or not. Okay, cool. This one worked. Let's go to this product, add wish list. Now let's come to the backend and let's refresh our page and see if those data are populating here or not. Yeah, these are the data. They are not the most beautiful data you have ever seen, but I have added just a basic information. In real world, you would not put a customer ID here. You would not put a product ID here. You have the product ID, you have the customer ID. You can send another GraphQL request to the product and then grab those information. GraphQL is what we will learn in the next video. That's why I showed you. You'll put the product title because for the user, this is not visible. Yes, this, is, this data is good for your database, but you have to send another request to Shopify and grab the new data from um, with GraphQL and then display it here. Uh, yeah, this is basically how I display the data for now. You can check out the source code, modify it however you want, but make sure the data is beautiful and you also check the documentation on the Shopify website. If you go to the content, um, 
let me go to the design they have different types of uh, information for example for data visualization they have some guidance on how you display the data if you are using chart or anything else if you go to the pro design you also have some design um, inspiration here you can use some of them for your data but for us you get the idea of how you display the data again if I come here nothing too fancy we just get the data we sort it and these stuff are like basic uh, prisma so yeah this is what i have done and in the next video you will learn the basic of graphql and how you interact with the um, data directly from um, shopify admin and also in the pricing uh, we are going to work on the pricing too users should be able to upgrade to the plus that is the future video and we will come to that too yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.